Metabolic signature. Estimating metabolic behavior using heart rate variability in blood glucose index. Hi, Alex here. I wanted to uh, mention to you something that I have been working now for a couple of years. In this period, I have been measuring, recording and tracking heart rate variability and blood glucose in different subset of population, primarily sport and uh, metabolic diseases. So we know now that the heart rate variability has been found to be a very consistent method in order for athletes to guide their training. At the same time, we know that also blood glucose has been found to be effective in trying to detect uh, metabolic behavior uh, in type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, and so on. Unfortunately, 7 out of 10 athletes that come through our door um, has been found to actually be either insulin resistant or having some form of dysglycemia where the blood glucose is heavily dysregulated. I decided to merge these two to try to combine these into a single index and this has been found very helpful not only in sport performance but also in general population subsets. Now we know that inflammatory response and sympathetic activation can go hand in hand. However, this is not often the case. So, for example, general behavior will see heart rate variability dropping through sympathetic activation and often inflammatory response would accompany that, especially post-training, when sessions are quite hard. Now, unfortunately, at times, this doesn't seem to happen or, to be more precise, the opposite doesn't seem to happen. So. In some athletes, especially the ones that would do um, high volume and endurance sport, but not only limited to their subset in sport, we see that the heart rate variability does not deviate a lot from the mean, uh, meaning that the athlete could carry on with the training with a certain intensity, and yet we start to observe an increase in glucose, both fasting and daily. This seemingly seem to be due to uh, activation of inflammatory pathways that seem to be not strictly related to sympathetic activation. Um, namely, TNF-alpha, for example, has an action on different cell uh, receptors, including uh, GLUT4, for example. Some of these will be non-insulin dependent. Yet, if we actually see that there is a inflammation with cellular infiltration of uh, inflammatory processes within the cells, we start to see a raise in blood glucose. This has been studied amply uh, in the obesity field, but didn't seem to correlate uh, strongly with the athletic performance because we tend to think that athletes will not be affected by such, a, such mechanisms. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be true uh, because part of the inflammatory response, especially when it becomes more chronic, uh, seems to affect also that subset of population. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you is uh, this is the data from one of my colleagues, and this is the blood glucose over a period of weeks of the current Olympic medalist. As you can see from this figure, it seems to be very erratic, and in some days the readings were in the high fives and sixes. So that is just to give you a very quick idea that uh, despite the person was uh, on a healthy diet, uh, ideally is not something that we want to see in a professional athlete. This is actually the uh, box plot of the same athlete, uh, which actually illustrates even better what is actually the mean, which is around 5.6. One of my colleagues, Dr. Daniel Plews, um, has written an article recently in relation to one of the uh, high-end elite endurance Ironman uh, athlete that he followed. And through, the, um, through a DEXA scan, they actually identified that his visceral fat, body fat percentage, despite the subcutaneous fat was actually uh, totally in line with such an athlete, um, this was actually quite elevated. And through bringing some changes, especially in the, the nutrition and the type of training and, and other variables, we saw a decrease in visceral adiposity and with consequence a slight increase in performance. In addition to that, what was important to me was actually a better control of blood glucose. 
The next box plot actually represent a reasonably high-end non-professional athlete that's both endurance and resistance and this person is on a low carbohydrate high fat diet. As you can see from this box plot 5.6 is still the actual mean and if you consider on a low carbohydrate high fat diet 5.6 to me in this specific contest is uh, considerably high. Uh, normally I would want to see these figures between the low fours and high fours. Anything above five, I would be personally wanting to investigate a little bit further. So one of the things that I have been doing is actually looking at the correlation that there is between a heart rate variability and blood glucose in a little bit more details. So I took um, some data out of six different groups and combined it into one. And I looked at the daily advice given by uh, a HRV-based model and when the glucose was elevated. So theoretically, uh, if the two would be very, very consistent, um, we would see that the glucose would have been elevated when the advice from the app system was actually negative. So when the heart rate variability will drop due to sympathetic activation and consequently inflammatory response, then the glucose would also elevate. So this would be an inverse relationship. I put that then into my index and highlighted when the blood glucose was actually elevated by red dots. So as you can see, even when the HRV app daily advice was actually positive, meaning that theoretically we should have a lesser inflammatory response and sympathetic activation, the persons here had an elevated blood glucose. I then carried on in my research project, looking at the uh, HRV plots of six different groups. These groups were uh, divided by uh, very simple criteria. So it was the type of diet and the type of sport. And this ranged from uh, just a normal, let's say, paleo style, lower type of carbohydrate all the way to ketogenic. And they went from very little uh, physical activity in the name of sport, but yet still physically active elite. The subset on elite, the group on elite, did not have actually that many uh, 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 subjects, yet it was, I think, is still relevant. As you can see from this box plot, the uh, HRV of group number one, three, and six seemingly would be the one that I would think are actually some of the best. I did then the same thing for blood glucose, and as far as blood glucose is concerned, we looked at blood um, group 1, group 2, and group 3 being the one with some of the lowest reading, and I would probably stretch that to say some of the healthiest reading. When I combined the two in my, with my system, the picture actually changed quite dramatically. As you can see, the group number 1 and group number 3 were the one that possibly had the best possible mix between optimal uh, data from heart rate variability and values of blood glucose. I personally think that this is really important because the system may help people in identifying that chronic baseline inflammatory response that at times may not be picked up by heart rate variability variations. This, I think, uh, has brought me to change slightly in the way how I advise, especially in athletic performance. The good thing about this is that we have means for different subset of population on heart rate variability. So there are guidelines in, in relation to heart rate variability. There are strong individual variations. There are also genetic factors. There are all sorts of things that we need to take into account. However, in both heart rate variability and blood glucose, we seem to have data from general population that we can use in order to guide us in understanding if there is a sympathetic activation and or at the same time present inflammatory response. In fact, this is looking at interpreting the data um, with the uh, HIV and blood glucose index and the amelioration that that has brought to one of my sample groups. 
Now, in summary, I look at the, the formula is really simple, is uh, RMS is the square of the standard deviation um, divided by the squared blood glucose. I square the blood glucose purely to actually bring uh, a little bit more weight to the blood glucose. Um, two of the most consistent and easily tracked variables, uh, really easy to actually adopt in daily life. You can use apps that can take you as little as 60 to 120 seconds or even longer if you wish. Uh, very, very affordable. And same thing for glucose. You get monitors now uh, that you know, from any uh, local pharmacy uh, or whatever store, uh, you can access these at a reasonably modest price. Also gives an insight to a wider range of inflammatory response. Primarily, the one that interested me the most will actually be the kind of chronic, low, medium chronic inflammatory response that may not be picked up every time by the heart rate variability. This is also helpful for guiding people over a long period of time, looking at trends, uh, which can identify perhaps period of too high load coming either from sports or lifestyle. As mentioned, it's a simple formula, and I personally think that will increase our understanding in looking at variation in metabolic flexibility. I just wanted to thank Waco Jaros for constantly uh, supporting me in uh, this project and all my projects in general. A uh, big thank you to Dr. Tommy Wood and Dr. Daniel Plews for either providing me information and or constantly trying to stress uh, the formula. Uh, we find a few hiccups, but um, I think we, they're easily manageable. Also, thank you for the people that provided the apps. Uh, so Jason Moore from Elite HIV and Greg Elliott um, providing data on general population and uh, the sports app for HIV monitoring that I tend to use the most, which is HRV for training from Marco Altini and Alessandra Saviotti. I hope this uh, helps. And if you have any idea on this, please leave a comment and I will be happy to investigate or answer the question if I know the answer that would be. Have a great day.